So par four's biggest mistakes, you'll find that people are definitely finding it in the handicap range of golfers quite hard to make scores over a period of time on par fours. So let's kick off by taking a look at some stats of par fours. This is how handicapped golfers play par fours. Which group are you in? Maybe in the comments down below, let me know which category of those are you in and are you playing the par fours to your handicap range above or below? In that comment section, let me know down below. You will find a lot of you are losing your shots on par fours. There's more of them on the course, as obviously there's going to be more chance to get them wrong. So let's start on the tee with some strategies, some ideas of how to get the par fours working for you. So first idea, which is really crucial, and this really is the basis of most of your scoring on par fours and fives, and we'll do fives as well, maybe in the comments let me know if you want me to do uh, scoring on par five issues. If you stay to the end of the video, you're gonna see how everything I say now applies, but it has to apply in situation. And the situations aren't as black and white as often people think, which I'll show you. I've got a secret student's data that I've been working on using stats and just um, course management to try and lower their handicap, where I can show you where strategies have to be applied on certain holes, which we'll come to. But basic idea is the start. Far down as you can in play. Now in play doesn't have to mean the fairway. This hole here, 17th for Honiton. I've got out of bounds down the right, a tree line that I can flirt with but don't really want to go in. Up the left, there's trees that I can go in and I can get in play. I can get a shot to the green. In play means that you've got a chance of hitting the green. That's what in play means. So putting all your money on the fairway and clubbing back just to hit the fairway isn't always the best option. Getting it up there in play often outplays that, but just watch as this develops. Also on this hole, if I miss left, I've got another fairway. So I do have a miss on this hole. So I'm gonna hit my driver at the left side and I'm gonna get it as far up there as I can in play. I wanna hit the fairway. What I wanna do is just see the ball down. Hit that well, going a little left. Might catch those trees or even get through and onto the other fairway and I should be in play. Now, if my pattern with the driver was to block it more often than go left. So if I was to hit it out of bounds on this hole and wreck scores, it's the 17th hole. I might choose the club back because of that shot on this hole and where the trouble lies. So great strategy for getting off a tee. I've got my 16 degree hybrid. This club tends to fade. It's not going to reach the trees on the left. It's going to hit into the fat of the fairway and maybe catch a semi. It's gonna leave me more in, so I wanna hit my driver. But if my driver's gonna go over the fence, I'm gonna club back to this one. Now look where I've teed up. I've teed up on the right side. I'm gonna hit into the course. Try and hit away from the out of bounds on the right. I'm using my teeing ground to help me hit into the course. I'd never tee this one up the left with the shape shot I'm gonna hit. Now this club tends to fade. That's its pattern. It's a bit different to the driver, which is a bit drawier. So I can aim this up the left, hit it as hard as I want, knowing it's gonna fade. It never really blocks, so I'm not gonna reach the out of bounds. So yes, I've got more club in, but I'm definitely in play. Maybe a five will do. Using your teeing ground, understanding what shape shots you hit with different clubs is absolutely crucial for you managing when you do bang it up there as far as you can and when you do have to protect against something like an out of bounds. Let's get up to those fairway balls. So let's start with my hybrid shot. So I'm now 170 out and I've missed the fairway by two yards. So I'm now in the rough and 170. The driver has actually gone a little bit lucky, so it could have been caught behind a tree, but it's got about 120 in and I'm over near the other uh, fairway, so I can just go over the trees and whack a wedge onto the green. As far up in play, remember if you are gonna club back because your pattern shows that you don't wanna hit out of bounds, this is still gonna allow me to possibly come out of here with a five and get rid of those double bogeys. Looking at those numbers that you saw at the start, depending on what handicap category you're in. For most golfers, it's not about making more birdies, which is me banging the driver up there. It's about making less double bogeys and making less over the fence golf shots. So this is a good option. It's just, if this goes wrong, it's gonna ask big questions on the approach. So I've got 170 yards 
and I'm going to hit a six iron. I'm going to give myself plenty of club. Now, a good rule of thumb on approaches for lots of golfers is amateur golfers generally miss short. The trouble is generally short of the green. So I'm just going to club up a little bit to try and get up to the flag. But there's another point you need to be careful of. Again, situation is where these kind of ideas make total sense. Let me just hit this one. Just drifting slightly right side, but it should be middle of the greenish. So I know this green, and lots of you will be playing the same courses time and time again. So you might know the shapes and patterns and where not to miss and those kind of ideas with the greens. Now to improve your approach play, understanding where to miss is key. So missing short is a pattern that golfers definitely fall into. So clubbing up is a good generalized rule, but it doesn't work all the time. If I go onto this green or even past this pin, I'm putting downhill. Now there's two bunkers left and right, which if I clubbed up, I could fly, but I'm not worried of those bunkers. From here, I've hit the fairway. I'm a long way back because I've hit my safe play. Hitting those bunkers means I might make a four, but more often than not, I'm going to make a five. So they're not actually worrying me. So rather than clubbing up on this situation, I'm now going to hit the right club to one that might actually come up short. So it's about finding your general patterns, but knowing when to implement them. And when we look at the secret student at the end, you're going to see this is so evident in so many people's golf. So you've got to understand the general rules, but then you've got to really know when you've got to apply them and when not to. This seven iron coming up, middle of the green to short is going to be a better miss for me. And on this situation, trying to chuck it to the back of the green. Take that one. Now the other point with approach is where you could make massive gains, where you'll see the players on the telly really excel, is if I do put myself in a situation where I need to hit a massive cut. So I need to get this ball moving left to right, or even low. Let's say I've got to punch it under those trees. Spending some time in these positions when you're practicing and learning how to control launches higher, lower learning how to hit banana shots. Remember what I said on the tee, each one of your clubs will follow generally a different pattern. It's too much club, but if I was to hit my driver here from the deck, it's gonna have a massive banana slice. Sometimes that awful shot, I'm actually gonna use it in situation. So improving your approaches, reading the lies out there, but getting better when you're in the rough stuff that we're going in a lot. Oh yeah, perfect. Three left. Oh, yes, please. Is a skill many of you need to practice more. Get on the range, practice some crazy shots. Take the last five balls or seven balls of your basket and practice crazy low with a seven iron, crazy hooks, crazy cuts with a four iron. And then you can use that data. You'll get out of these situations when you do get in them. So let's go around the green and to the green. And obviously this applies to any par now, but we're still on the par fours and we want to make a par. By coming up short on this situation, where this green is sloped so heavily back to front, I've now got a basic putt or a nine iron run to try and get me a par and five at the worst because of how safely and managed I've played the hole. Now nothing changes with this shot. I'm going to read it like I read my approach, but maybe a little bit more detail on slope. I'm gonna read it into the fact that I want to try and leave this, if anything, lower the hull. I don't want this going miles, miles past. Oh, I'll take that one. So now going over a bunker, let's say I've missed the green, almost pin I right, and I have brought these bunkers into play. What I might do now is choose just to go a little bit further. I'm just gonna to commit to throwing this up to five or 10 feet. Or if I'm feeling confident and short game is your skill, you're just gonna st stand here and hit your normal shot. I'm gonna manage my feelings over this, no different to all the other shots, my patterns. So again, knowing your patterns with a 58 degree lob, if that's a club you've got, as much of a skill as anything else. I have a tendency to catch them a little bit fat. I put plenty of speed in there. And even when I hit a pretty average strike, the dunch and run on that situation has helped me. I'm using my patterns to score. So once you get on the green, let's pretend I've hit two of my best shots on the 17th and I'm 20 foot away. You know, I was 170 yards out. That's a pretty good second shot. Not all 20 foot putts are the same. Managing the slope, managing when you attack and defend, I've seen this time and time again when I've played in pro-ams. People hit two great shots, they're excited. They hit this putt with the same expectations as the one uphill. They end up free putting. Next heel gets a bit quiet. Seven 
So this downhill 20 footer for me is about pace control. It's a lag putt, hoping it drops, but knowing it would be very easy to hit 10 foot past. It's much more of a defense mode putt. My whole objective is changing, where if we have a 20 foot uphill, so the 20 foot putt uphill, my expectations of holding are higher, my feelings of confidence are higher. I'm gonna manage my feelings around attack and defend. Too often I see amateurs play good shots and then get a little bit unstuck here by just not respecting slope enough. Uphill, downhill, side slopes, no one to attack and defend. It's key to scoring. So let's go and look at the secret students data because there's some good Gemini's information in there but you're gonna see that he has to apply these ideas on some holes but some holes, he absolutely doesn't. Let's go and show you his data. So looking at the secret students, issues at the course, so he's playing the same course each time, he's a member. There is a, gonna be a full video talking about what I'm doing with the secret student. It's to do with a project me and Matt will be doing, which hopefully you can get involved with. So he, get, he was getting untangled at the start of his data capture before we talked on some strategy on certain holes. So generally it was the third and fourth he was getting really unstuck and having penalty shots. This is the fourth hole here, he's hit driver, he's hit it in the bunker, and then he's hit it in the water, taking a penalty drop and he's taking six shots. His next nine holes, he parred the third, which is good, bogeyed the fourth again, like blitz in a driver, way offline now, trying to hit the green from where he is over here on the right of the fourth hole in this case. Like he's blindsided, he's coming over a lake and the green's super, super narrow when I measure it at that point. And then we go to another round here, he doubles the third. So this is going left into the trees, chipping out, chipping out uh, with a three wood off a tee. And then the fourth, he's gone to a three wood. And again, he's gone just short of the bunker, dumped it in the water, um, mucking around by the green, taking six. So he's got like reoccurring patterns. But look, so that's hitting drive around three wood off a tee. We then move it forwards to some of his other rounds. Also, we stay in those rounds. If we stay in those rounds, actually, and look at the sixth hole, the sick ball, he's blitzing driver up here. Bit left, but still making bogey. Next nine holes, if we look at the sick ball, makes a par. Driver again, left, makes a par. The sick ball is actually more narrow than the third and the fourth in some incidents, but his miss is okay on that hole. It can get rewarded. So he whacks his driver up there and generally gets away with it. The sixth hole, he isn't struggling with. The third and fourth are taking up a massive percent of his total score. He's dropping four shots in a round sometimes on those two holes. So improving his strategy and awareness with different clubs. So the data showed that he was much more accurate with his five wood. So we started talking about hitting five wood off those tees. He didn't need to be way down. And then trying to hit a three wood in a different way. So maybe from the ground, so it never goes left on the hole where he can't miss left. So improving your par fours, improving the score on those, is not always about improving one shot. It's about over 10 rounds, can you make an average lower score? Because you can see the average scores of par fours. He's 4.79 for instance at the moment, which is lower than where we started. And again, I've got a full video coming on those ideas. But it's about trying to play the hole to the best each time you play it and keeping it in play. And that won't always be subject to just the distance and how narrow and wide it is. It'll be to do with where the miss is. The third hole, for instance, at this course, you hit uphill, so it's a blind tee shot. You just can't picture that shot very well. On the sixth, his miss left is fine. His miss right, right hits uh, another fairway, and then it's a, a wider green to get on. He's reading the course and playing his course. So we, we club him back, but it's not that generic one thing. Club back and just stop it in your driver. That won't help him because his driver on some holes is really helping him. It's this other holes, his free wooden driver was getting him in a lot of trouble. Let me know if this helps. Let me know what your average score is for those par threes, fours and fives. It's such an interesting experiment when you do it with students. You can really start to peel the onion back and maybe realizing that it's not all about hitting perfect positions. Obviously that can help you lower those scores, but actually how you play those holes, how you manage your misses and not in situation is vital for you shaving shots off per round and getting that handicap cut. Let me know if this helps. Post comments down below. As always, thanks for watching. See you in the next video.